we're doing right now is, is to help you remember and to learn and to know. As Yahshua taught this way, he said, And again I say unto you, bye, baby. And again I say unto you. And so this is what we do, you know. And again I say unto you. And I'm teaching you some things that are just basics to get us even prepared that, so we can maybe verbalize some of the things that we have and share it with other people. The reason is that you need to be equipped to do this is because most people already have a mindset and it's hard to break that mindset. It's hard for them to, number one, they don't even have a need to change. They're satisfied with, you know, the religion that's taught by the American gospel or the American gospel. And they've taken care of that and they've put it on their shelf, so to speak, as we say. And they don't, don't, don't mess with it now. It's there. I've taken care of that. We let, we let Jesus take care of that. He paid it all. He paid the price. I don't have to do anything now. And so that's a gospel that is being peddled across America. And, and what's hard is it's being peddled by some really good people. There's people that I love. You know, I, I was one of them. And the Bible's clear that one of the reasons that people perish is because of a lack of knowledge. And it's interesting in John 3, 16, that it says that we should not perish, but yet many people perish because of a lack of knowledge. When I talk to people who have been in the ministry, who have doctorate degrees, and I try to listen to what they say, I can understand by a few things that they don't know the true gospel preached by the prophets, the apostles, and Yahshua. And somebody said, well, how can that be so? Listen, it can be so. I know personally. Number one, if they don't know God's name, I know that they don't have an un uh, understanding of the gospel that was preached in the, that the Bible preaches. If they don't know Yahshua's name, they call him Jesus. I understand this, that they do not and have never really investigated the truth of that name and why, the importance of that name. You know, I have a lot of people say, man, you know, I mean, we wrote a lot of songs with the name of Jesus. You all sang one this morning. And it, Yahshua just don't write good, you know what I'm saying, in a song. Uh, Bill, Bill Gaither's song, you know, he wrote years ago, there's something about that name. Jesus, 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 oh, there's something about that name. There, and he was right. It, there is. There's, it don't mean anything. Somebody made it up. And the reason they made it up, listen close, is because they, don't, they did one or two things. They either did like the rabbis to try to hide the name, the tetragrammaton, you know, the, uh, of what Yahweh's name was and what it meant, which hid, they, they were selfish and hid the name because they thought it was everything God's word says it is. His name is to be praised, you know, I don't want to get into that. But, but second of all, they were ignorant of what the name, because it's in that name that, that all of the gospel and the intent of God in mankind. So to, under, to believe in Jesus, what we've done, we've accepted that Greek term, and, and that Greek term has turned around and robbed people of the opportunity of knowing what the true gospel is. And so, you know, but when you try to write, if Bill Gaither's song would never have been a hit if he would have said, Yahshua, Yahshua, there's something about that name. It just don't write good. So I understand, you know, that if somebody don't know that, the chances are they have no clue. Second of all, I asked them, do they know the foundational principles? I said foundational principles that the Bible says if, that we are to learn them, know them, apply them, and not lay them again in our lives and it's the only way and path to go unto on unto perfection well what's american gospel tell you nobody's perfect we're just we're just a bunch of sinners saved by grace is that me that's just a bunch of i'm just a bunch of sinners saved by grace that's all we are and we couldn't do it we, oh that's why jesus came he he paid it all i mean i, I know it i know that i can teach that message very well but the fact of the matter is, you can't go on to perfection, which is, means this, the completion of the process. Because they don't think there is a completion to a process. They think that Jesus completed the process. Because they believe 
that the end result and the reward of what God has is that they're going to go to heaven and live forever. And do you know what? Not one time in the Bible does it say that. I was teaching Wednesday night. I was talking about the gospel in the garden. Never said it. The gospel to Abraham never said it. The gospel the pre that Moses preached never said it. The gospel that David preached or that was preached to David never said it. Never said one time. So my, first of all, so what they do, they, say, they, they quote the one scripture or might I say they misquote the one scripture that says, you know, the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present from the, from the, with the Lord. I said, number one, you misquoted it. I've never heard a preacher at a funeral, I've heard them read it correctly, but I've never heard them quote it correctly. And they use that scripture, and it shows me once again that they never read that whole passage. And they didn't read everything else Paul had written about what happens at death what the purpose of God is. And so there is a term that I have taught you, and I hope that all of those that are listening to me today that uh, on Ustream and other places, I want them to understand. You can go online and listen to what's called God manifestation. Because without understanding the purpose of God through God manifestation, and please don't judge me by what you think that means. I get judged all the time about my teaching on hell by people who don't ever have never even listened to it. So make sure you have an understanding if you're able to. I had, I had a friend one time wanted me to debate his friend who had a doctorate, who was my friend. I mean, man, y'all need to get together and debate. I said, but debate what? He said, about what happens at death. And so, you know, I said, well, let me ask you this. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 5. I said, are we going to base what the, the, your Bible says about what happens to a man when he dies? Or are you just going to say, well, I don't believe that? It says, go ahead, give me Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 5, because I want to tell you, a lot of people don't even believe that this is in the Bible. If you read your Bible... The, the, all the scriptures in your Bible that say, tells you what happens to a man at death, listen to this, for the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything, neither have they any more a reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Another scripture we use is, of course, Isaiah 26. They says they are dead because there are a class of people that will die who will never raise up. So when I tell them all the scriptures, that every, the Bible says that this is what happens when people die. Now, if you don't believe the Bible, okay, I can't debate you. I can't, I can't try to show you something if you're not going to believe the Bible. And I can't tell you the number of times that people tell me that they don't believe what the Bible says. They'd rather base it because it's just too, it's too much trouble to change what you believe especially if you're a pastor to get up in church and tell people uh we're wrong so when you have a understanding somebody says, well, why does it matter because if you think that your eternal reward is in heaven number one you don't believe the bible you're calling the bible a liar number two is then what it's doing it's robbing you of your the possibility of you getting immortality to live forever. So that's why it's important. God told me, man, he said, man, why is it even important? Man, your mama loved Jesus. She was born again. So I said, she didn't go. You know, you have to go on to perfection. He that's, that endure to the end shall be saved. Salvation is not instantaneous. I don't care how many aisles you walk down. I don't tell, care how many times you cried or you shook the preacher's hand or spoke in tongues. And but because we believe our destination is heaven, even though the Bible doesn't teach it. It robs us of qualifying. You don't need to qualify. Let me tell you what Yahshua did. He bought you a ticket into the race. But he ain't going to run it for you. He wasn't your, our substitute. He was a representative. So this morning, I want to talk about something that's so basic. And that is 
what are the conditions required for us to fulfill in order for us to be saved because nobody going to be saved till we stand before Yahshua on that day. How many of you know that if you believe that when you die you go to heaven, then you have just robbed Yahshua of being the king and the whole gospel that he preached was about him being the king of the earth and his kingdom coming to earth. You robbed him of it. He don't get to, he don't get to judge on that day, even though the Bible says he will. But he don't get to do that. Why? Because evidently you're already judged. How many of you understood what I just said? Okay. The most important... It is of the most importance this morning that we grasp this thing because I want to tell you, if you don't renew your mind with this, you will fade back to your strength. And your strength is what your mom and your daddy taught us and our Sunday school teachers taught us all of our lives. It's just easier to do that than just to fall back. So the, we got to posture ourselves to receive the things that God has decided to impose and not what you or me or our consciences or our ideas or our traditions believe. Years ago when I was first talking and preaching about fixing to preach about hell, I got with a friend of mine, and, you know, he has a big church that qualifies him to a lot of people. He, he, you know, was successful. We were playing golf one day. I said, bro, you got to help me, man. I started telling him what the Bible says about hell, that I discovered what the Bible said about hell. It took me hours and hours and a long time, but I was hungry and I wanted to know the truth regardless. And I began to tell him, I said, man, what do you think? He said, I don't agree with that. I said, Why? I just don't, he said. I said, well, guess what? Neither do I. I don't agree with one thing that I'm telling you, but it's what the Bible says. I said, I gotta, let me ask you a question. Have you ever studied the word hell and what hell is? He said, no. Do you know what the word even means in the Hebrew or the Greek? No. So you don't know that the Greek words, there's three words for hell. You don't know that it means helmet. You don't mean it means, you don't, you don't know any of that. So have you ever spent any time? Do you have a series on it? Do you have anything? No, never. I said, well, I don't think I care what you think or not either. But he was absolutely assured. So later on, we were golfing in Daytona. And that night, he got a little emotional with me, and he was like, I love you, man. You're my best friend. I said, you ain't my best friend. If you were my best friend, you, I said, you don't even know what I'm preaching anymore. He said, well, what are, you, what are you talking about? I said, you don't even know what I'm preaching about hell, and I'm so far past that, it ain't funny. He said, I'll tell you what, you send me the teaching, and I promise you I will listen to it. I said, bro, you promise me. You will listen to it. Well, he thought it was going to be a 60-minute CD. He didn't know it was going to be nine CDs, about 12 hours of teaching. I said, you swear to me right now, and you promise me you're going to listen to it. So I gave him the series, and he... I believe he listened to it. He told me he did, and I believe him. So I said, let me ask you a question. What do you disagree with? This guy was a graduate of two Bible colleges. Actually, he went to three, but graduated from two. So what do you disagree with? He said, man, I can't disagree with anything. I said, that's awesome, man. That's, where I, that's, what, that's what happened to me. You going to preach this good news to your people? He said, man, I can't do that. I lost respect that day for him. I got to tell you this. He told me, I'm going to get a couple of my staff guys to verify it. I said, my God, verify it. I thought I was your best friend. Won't you? <laughs> Are you all with me today? What we're up against isn't just out there. It's in our own minds that we have to deal with and be convinced of what the Bible says. So what my conscience says or my idea says, or listen to this, what the Holy Spirit says. Because most people wouldn't know the Holy Spirit if he came knocking on their front door with a sign on him. 
I'm scared when I start people saying to me, oh, man, the Holy Spirit. I, I, I'm glad my mechanic didn't learn what he knows from the Holy Spirit. I'm glad my dentist didn't learn what he knows from the Holy Spirit. I saw a guy the other day, two guys out there, man, had needed those pliers and a hammer. And the guy said, get that one right there. <laughs> Trying to pull it out. Anybody see that video? Did you see it? Was that one of your cousins? <laughs> Could have been, Dick. Can I tell you this morning, I'm glad that my doctor didn't learn what he knows from the Holy Spirit. What you, Johnny, that's sacrilegious. No, what it is is people, they think the Holy Spirit is this thing that's really their own conscience or their own emotions or, or they'll, they'll feel nostalgia. Or they'll sing a song, you know, like, what, what's, a, what's one of those Christian song. I mean, some of them just sing a song and it reminds them of grandma, you know, and they, they think those two do daddies and is the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you what, that ain't the Holy Spirit, guys. That's nostalgia. So all this stuff, it doesn't matter. If we're not going to go with the Bible, then I say, let's shut down. I'm not interested then. Because if the Bible doesn't set the precedent of what we are to believe, then we should quit saying we're Christians. Are you with me? The conditions of what we are to believe and what's, how it's going to happen, it's already been determined by the giver of these things. we got to realize that we have no say-so and that God has the right to say what conditions He requires in order to grant us eternal life or immortality. Mindset of Yahshua in Luke chapter 18 verse 17 he said in order you're not going to be able to receive the kingdom of God unless you have the mindset of a little child and I want to tell y'all what a little child will absorb stuff and learn stuff and y'all know they will when you hear a little kid say cuss words they got it from their mama probably all of mankind is perishing under a process of death that started in the garden and there is no alternative he said this thou shalt surely die and so what we are is a race of mortals who are on a journey of death and we don't have any power whatsoever to keep us from that result you shall surely die and I gotta tell you that sentence has yet to be renounced because every man dies now to understand what's going to save us from that I believe in the Bible I believe in what the prophets preached I believe somebody asked me one time man you ain't cool no more I said, why not? You use the King James Version. I said, let me tell you why I use King James Version. Because I know that it is a translation and not a transliteration or a paraphrase. And I know I can take that King James Bible and, and I can take a Greek lexicon or Hebrew dictionary or a, a concordance and I can go to a word in the King James and I know that that word, even though not every time is it, is it even translated perfectly or good, I know that word will show me the original word in the Hebrew. So that's why I do it but for studying. If not, transliterations, what they usually do is they have an influence of whoever it was that transliterated it or paraphrased it. The fact is, you'll see that that's what happened to the King James Bible and I've, I've told you that taught you that already so we got to believe what the prophets say what the apostles said and what the Lord himself taught Yahshua was sent for the purpose of doing one thing and that is opening the way to eternal life it was closed I'm gonna open you up remember he said I'm the door I'm the way have you ever you've heard that before the apostle were sent to show us how to enter into the way that Yahshua 
made. What I was taught all my life and what I believe is that the preaching of the gospel message was to preach the message so people can get converted. How many of you remember years ago, some of you don't remember this, there was a guy that we met, his name was Praise the Lord George. Had a church over in Chiefland. And praise the Lord George, man, he got more people saved than anybody I ever met in my life. You go somewhere with him, he said, how you doing? My name's George. Nice to meet you. Do you know Jesus Christ, your personal Savior and Lord? No, pray, pray after me. Say this, God, forgive me my sins, come in my heart, blah, blah, whatever he said. You're saved. Ha <laughs> ha, he marked it down again. He believed that the preaching of the gospel was for one purpose, and that is to save people and convert the whole world. But I want to tell you what I found out. That is not what the Bible t- teaches. God never proposed such a result. And obviously, since the introduction of the gospel, we've seen the world has not been converted. The gospel has really not influenced hardly anybody, really. People who, who are say they're Christians now do things now that they would never have done when I was a kid, things were accepted now that nobody would have ever even spoken about. And now Christians watch it on TV every Friday night. Quite the contrary. I'm going to give you Acts chapter 15, verse 14. I'm going to tell you why the purpose of God is. What the purpose of God is. So, Simeon hath declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to do what? To take out of them a people for his name. Now, I know a lot of people think that when I, I, I overreact about the name, I want to tell you, I, I'd rather not use the name. I'm, I'm called all kind of stuff because they think it's kind of, oh, you're a name guy. Well, no, Yahweh's a name guy. He was very specific about these things. And he's going to take out a people for his name. It's like this. I'm going to pick out a wife for my name. People's name and reputation used to really mean something. I don't know if you realize that or not. But the real reason for the gospel message was a gathering out of every kindred, every tongue, every tribe, every nation, all the people of all generations, a people who will corporately display the name of Yahweh and represent that name and what it means in the earth. The gospel is not bow your head, close your eyes so you can miss hell and go to heaven. That is not the gospel. Yahshua never preached even his death and burial and resurrection. He preached what he called, and the Bible calls, the gospel of the kingdom. He didn't say, if you'll accept me as your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I'm going I'm to die on a cross and be buried. As a matter of fact, when it came time to do that, his disciples were confused. They didn't even realize that. They believed that he was the coming king and he was fixing to do what we're saying he's going to come and do. And that's faith in that is what saves a man. Listen to this. It's an invitation to all who accept it to be a part of that name by putting on that name in the way that God's already told us how we have to do it. How can you become adopted by God and be part of his name? fact is Matthew 22 14 and this is the sad fact and watch this real close for many are called how are we called by grace people say you they don't think I believe in grace I'm like, you're kidding me I believe in mercy and grace I love the grace of God and it's by grace that he calls if you get a call it's by God's grace but he's only going to choo- choose a few you hear what I just said? He's not looking for just calling everybody and everybody's going to be saved. Everybody's not going to be saved. He's going to call many. And then out of the ones he calls, he's only going to choose a few. In Luke chapter 13, verse 24, this he said, many people are going to strive to enter in. Will you give me, listen to this. Strive to enter into the straight gate 
For many, I shall say unto you, will seek to enter in. But guess what? They won't be able to. In Mark chapter 16, verse 15, he said this, Go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Believe what? Here's the basic premise on which these people... For his name is going to be selected. They had to hear the gospel that Yahshua, the apostles, the prophets all preached about. It was that gospel, and they had to believe that gospel. I want to tell you, it wrecked my world. All these years, I thought all my religious experiences was salvation. And I realized I didn't even know the true gospel that Yahshua preached. I knew some kind of thing about it, but that ain't what my faith in was, was for salvation. If you didn't hear it, and how can you hear it if somebody don't preach it? And if nobody's preaching it, how many of you know you can't hear it? And if you can't hear it, you can't believe it. And if you can't believe it, you can't be saved. Now, I know this flies in the face of us who have been religious and been through all of our religious, you know, uh, I mean, I was raised in the Assemblies of God. I was a thoroughbred Assembly of God. I know it, done it, been to school. I knew all the, the political guys. I know. But I had to realize that what I didn't know was the true gospel. Pastor to church. Things happen. Church grew. We had all, y'all know. The gospel was the means by which and the only means by which one should not perish. Ephesians 1.13, Paul said it's the gospel of your salvation. Romans 1.16, listen to this. He says that this gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. How can you believe something you've never even heard? People say, man, why are you so mad? I'm not mad. I'm frustrated. I'm passionate. I was angry for a while because why didn't somebody teach me this? I'll tell you why. Because they were entrepreneurs. These were businessmen, man. They were too busy having, be, trying to be successful. That's what they teach us and taught us, I should say. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. So this morning... The first step for somebody to be saved and begin the journey of salvation, remember, there's no salvation until you get your will done. Are y'all with me this morning? You know, I, sometimes I preach this stuff, and it's, it feels redundant. You know, it feels redundant. But the fact is, I know that it has to be emphasize and it has to be said in Acts chapter 11 we see a good example first thing you got to do to truly be saved according to God's ways not the American gospel let me tell you what and y'all know through the American gospel we can have all kind of experiences we can have all kind of experiences, emotional, nostalgic, imaginary. You know, we'll, our mind can believe certain things. We can, do you know that you can get converted by almost anything? Do you know that probably a Democrat can be converted by a Republican? Yeah, I may be pushing it. But there can be conversion. You know what? Some people could be a Yankee fan and be converted to a Boston fan. Who knows? That's pretty probably miraculous too. But there can be a conversion process that makes a person more chaste than they would have been before. I've turned over a new leaf. I'm not that man anymore. How many of you know you don't need God necessarily to make those kind of choices? Tell you what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to drink alcohol anymore. I'm not going to smoke anymore. I'm going to go on a diet. People can be converted from, from being people that love fruity pebbles to somebody that just likes fruit. And it can convert them, their whole way of thinking. And guess what they'll do? They will preach that to you. This morning, I want you to listen to me. And I know I'm preaching a lot to the people who are 
hungry for this that aren't here don't even live in this city but I'm preaching for us too I'm equipping you and Cornelius in Acts chapter 11 an angel appeared to him and he said you go get Peter and he's going to tell you some words whereby you and your family can be saved now I'll tell you I want to know what those words are I want to know what those words are. And so in Acts chapter 16, verses 30, 31, the Philippian jailer asked the question. You know, Paul and Silas were in jail. The earthquake came. They were praising God. And the jailer said this, what must I do to be saved? And Paul told him this, believe on the master Yahshua the Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. I love it. I love household salvation. I believe that a man who really gets the real deal, who believes upon the real Christ, who believes the true gospel, that it'll affect his whole house. Somebody said, I don't know why my kids, I've had them in church all my life, because it does not have the power of God unto salvation. Now, there's some kids, kids that are just good, and they'll be good even when their parents aren't good. And there's a moral thing. I don't, don't misunderstand what I'm saying I'm saying what does it take for what the Bible says for you to have immortality to believe on Yahshua and believe in the gospel are exactly the same things why because of what the name Yahweh means do you know what Yahshua means or Joshua if you, people say what's the English word say Joshua Yahshua means Yahweh saves. What does Yahweh mean? I will be in whom I will be. A people that he is gathering to make like himself, an adoption, so to speak. The gospel is made up the good news of Yahshua that he has shown us the way back to the tree of life. And you'll know I've taught you. The tree of life is a seed, incorruptible seed that's planted in us, and we are to nurture it and let it grow. We, there's a good teaching on it. If a man believes the gospel, he believes on Yahshua. If he's ignorant of the gospel, he cannot believe on Yahshua, for Yahshua is not just the mere name of a Savior as a person. Listen close to me. He is the prototype. Are you listening? of the first of many sons he is the first of a new creation let me take a little rabbit trail here John chapter 1 in the beginning was the word the words with God and the word was God everybody thinks that Yahshua pre-existed in heaven and God sent him down here now let me tell you what pre-existed in heaven the word of God and the same way in the Genesis of the first creation of the first Adam the word was with God and he spoke and all that was created have you read it in John chapter 1 it's sort of the Genesis of the second creation where the last Adam was created and God spoke and Yahshua the man was a creation and the manifestation of God through that word in a man and he was the beginning of the new creation that's why Jesus wasn't. We can only understand that type of thing if we understand what the true intent of God is and what the true good news that God has given to us is about. The first thing we must do to be saved is to believe the true gospel. And so in order to believe the true gospel, I think it's imperative that we know the true gospel. My, my cry to God many times, if I can get personal with you a minute, it, it, it's confusing to me. Because my cries many times is people that I see, people that I love dearly, who are just once had a zeal for God. And it may not have been according to knowledge, as Romans says, but they had a zeal for God. But that zeal died out. And they have no soft heart of flesh anymore they got a hard heart 
toward the things of God and nothing moves them anymore. Nothing bothers them. They, they just say, okay, we're here. Let's see, let me do my, do my thing. And they don't even understand anymore that the deception of their own self is preventing them because they think they've already done everything they're supposed to do by believing that Jesus did it all. My heart's desire is for that never to happen to anybody that I'm going to have to answer to God for. And I pray that God will, you know, I put on Facebook today, you know, yeah, there's a few people who have fallen asleep while I preached, but there's been a few that also have awakened. And when the sons of Adam will awaken by me preaching this gospel, if just one or two, you know, I, maybe I've done what God's called me to do. This awakening that takes place. So I guess the question is really, what is the gospel? And do you really even believe it? If you don't know what it is, if you can't tell others what it is, then it's going to be impossible for you to believe it. If you don't believe it, then you won't ever get a well done that leads you unto salvation. You cannot proceed into believing something that you don't even know. In Ephesians 4, 5, the Bible says this, watch. There is one faith. Because of this other thing that got in and through Constantine and, you know, we call it the hijacking of the gospel, what happened is all those years ago when it mingled the seed, now, I don't know what it is now, but I read, I know like two years ago, there's over 33,000 different sects and divisions and denominations of Christianity. And yet the Bible says... There's only one faith. That's confusing. The one faith consists of the things that the Bible says are required by God to believe. Hebrews 6.6 6 says that without the knowledge and belief of those things, things that are required in the one faith, then it's impossible to please God. You, you can't please God if you don't have faith, and you can't have faith in something and believe something that you don't even know about. It's pretty simple. Ephesians 2.8 says that we're saved by the knowledge and belief of those things. Hebrews 10.38 says we are to live by the knowledge and belief of those things. True biblical faith is not the hypothetical reliance on and the re an acknowledgement of a God. Now, the reason I have to give all these scriptures, I, wouldn't, I hate to bore y'all with them, is because even if I misquote them, some people believe it just because I'm quoting scripture. Well, he must, that must be true, John, if you've got scripture for it. Or this is what happens. Some people will try to prove us. So you blame them if I'm taking too long having to quote some scriptures and boring us to death with the word of God. True biblical faith is the knowledge, is the knowledge and the belief of a sp specific thing that God promised. Do you know that nowhere in the Bible did God promise anybody that they were going to go to heaven? As a matter of fact, in 1 Thessalonians, I taught you a couple of Sundays ago that here Paul was saying, now, brethren, I would not have you ignorant about those that are sleeping. And he begins to tell them what happens, that men are in the grave, and that if there is no resurrection, men, men are without hope. I'm like, wait a minute, what are you talking about? I thought if they were without hope, I thought they were in heaven already. And so he, then he says, but they will be resurrected. The dead in Christ shall rise first, and they which alive and remain shall be caught up. Y'all know the scripture. And he said, comfort one another with these words. And I'm thinking, that gummit, Paul, why didn't you comfort them by telling them that their mama was in heaven? Let me tell you, I think that was the best opportunity in the whole Bible. Don't you just say, hey, I'm going to comfort you with this. It's okay. They're with the Lord. But he didn't do it. He said they're in the grave and they got to be res well, they have to be resurrected. I mean, I got in this thing Wednesday night, man. I got to thinking about the ascension and what the angels said to the disciples. 
Here he is. He told them, I must go away, but you cannot come. <laughs> That's what he said. But you can't come where I'm going. And so they're looking up there as Yahshua is ascending. They're looking up. Ain't we coming with you, Jesus? Ain't we coming? And you know what the angel said? You big dummies. Why are you looking up here? Why are you looking up here? This same Yahshua is going to come back. <laughs> it's like, but still, we still, oh, yo, let me get in my message today. I got about three things going on with people right now. Adam's knowledge and belief was the empowerment of him to require righteousness. Nowhere in the Bible did, Yahshua, or did, did Abraham get promised that when he died, he would go to heaven. Nowhere. In Romans 9, he said he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. What was the promise of God? But was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. There's your faith. You believe that what God promised he's going to do, he will do it. And what did he say he'll do? Even if you die without receiving the promise, he knew that God would raise him up and make his word good. So the faithful, or full of faith Abraham, became the father of those that believe. His life det defines and det the true biblical faith about a certain knowledge of certain promises and specific promises that God made to him. So the gospel required to us, for us to be saved was the same gospel required for him to be saved, and it's made up of these unfulfilled specific things. In Acts chapter 8, verse 12, it says, but when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Yahshua Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Here you go. Get your ears turned on. Two things make up the true gospel. Number one, the things concerning the kingdom of God. And number two, the things concerning the name of Yahshua. The kingdom of God and the name of Yahshua. These things relate to the kingdom of God and what's going to happen and the way of unto salvation, which is in that name. There is salvation under no other name. I think the name's pretty important because the name speaks of the way of salvation. Yahweh saves. How's he, what do you mean Yahweh saves? It ain't Yahweh's going to save you and send you to heaven. Yahweh's going to save you, and the gospel of the kingdom teaches those specific things. And why? And the purpose of the end result of those things. So all these things that Yahshua preached, that the apostles preached, that the prophets preached, that the Bible teach, must be known and understood before somebody can have saving faith. You cannot have the gospel of the kingdom without understanding those things concerning the name. The knowledge of both reveal the full circle of the divine plan of God. Romans 8, 24. What do we say by hope? Not a hope, but the hope of the gospel. What is the hope of the gospel? Listen, guys. If you believe that the hope of the gospel is you're going to die and go to heaven, you are believing the wrong thing. Can you hear me today? And I know, listen, I, I realize, some people don't realize that I realize what I'm up against. I'm against almost everybody that I know. And there's really, we're in an age of people looking for something that really fits what they believe and they're more comfortable with and what they're, they're a better fit in. Well, I'm, I'm just, I'm a better fit there. Instead of what God says. That's why I'm not interested in, in petting people. 
That's why I'm not interested in us having this service, you know, that we, we're trying to appease the, the, what people. I believe you should bring the sacrifice to God. And sacrifice means that something's going to die. And it's probably going to be you. True? Somebody's talking about, what are, y'all, what are y'all giving away at church this week? I said, we don't give, give away at church. We receive. You don't come to get something from God. You come to bring something to God. You understand that? But in America, we appease those things. I'm not interested. And I hope you're not interested. Well, I know you're not. I know who I'm preaching to this morning. And those things concerning the kingdom of God, the name of Yahshua, that we know and believe, that's what gives us this hope that we're saved for. What are we hoping for? We're hoping for that well done when we stand before Yahshua to see whether or not we're going to have immortality or not have immortality. And nobody gets immortality until then. Plenty of teaching on it. How many know the reward is immortality and then and rule and reign with Christ? So these definite conditions regarding these certain things and compliance to those things is what's required. And I got to tell you, there's no neutral ground. If you and I have any expectation at all for eternal life, immortality, to live forever, it's going to be because of the knowledge and the belief of what the Bible says we have to believe and know in order to receive it. And we better not have any other grounds of confidence no matter what relationships pressure us to believe otherwise. So we can't abide by anybody else's terms but God's. So belief is the acceptance of that something is true and a firmly held opinion or conviction. And you can't have that until knowledge comes. And that knowledge is the foundation of our belief. The things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Yahshua Christ are the facts on which our belief regarding our future are founded. Otherwise, our destiny is nothing, no different than everybody else's. And that is eternal death. you either going to have eternal life given to you on that day or you're going to have eternal death. And the Bible says that there's some that already are in their eternal death that they will never raise up. They'll never raise. So the first condition of salvation is belief. But belief is not true belief if it stands alone. Obedience is vital. We have to be a doer. This morning, I think I'm done. I've got a lot more to give, but, but I'm done this morning. Bye, y'all.